This rock contains fossilized microscopic organisms that lived 1.9 billion years ago. They are the first of their kind ever to be discovered, and before they were found, the oldest known fossils were only 500 million years old, meaning that the scientists who discovered them single-handedly extended the fossil record by 1.4 billion years. Welcome back to Science in Real Life. I'm Molly and I'm a PhD student in biology at Harvard University. And right now I am deep inside Harvard's paleobotany collections to bring you the story of these amazing fossils as part of the We Create EDU spring collaboration. We Create EDU is an incredible community of educational YouTubers and we've all gotten together this spring to make videos on the theme of firsts. So be sure to check out that playlist if you want to see more. All right, well, it's time to introduce you to the scientists who made this monumental discovery. Elsa Barkhorn was a paleobotanist at Harvard, and Stanley Tyler was a geologist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. In the 1940s, Tyler was exploring the Gunflint Formation, a rocky expanse west of Lake Superior, and thought he could make out microscopic little plant-like organisms embedded in the rock. He brought them to Barghorn, who said he almost fell out of his chair when he realized he was looking at fossilized microorganisms. So yeah, at this point, the oldest known fossils were some worms and jellyfish that were only around 500 million years old. And this had been bothering scientists as far back as Darwin, because if evolution happened, then those worms and jellyfish must have evolved from simpler life forms. But like, where were the fossils of those life forms? So the Gunflint Formation was the first time that those simpler organisms were discovered as fossils. So let's take a look at what Barkhorn and Tyler found hidden inside of those Gunflint rocks. First they made slices of gunflint so thin that light could pass through, and then they could look at the specimens with a microscope. And they found... Blobs? Oh wait, oh, nope, that's a smudge. Uh, over here, uh, nope, more blobs. What? So you might be wondering why Barkhorn and Tyler were confident that these were actually fossilized organisms as opposed to just random blobs in the rock. And there are three lines of evidence that point to the fact that these are actual fossilized little critters. The first is that they just resemble organisms that we can find living today. See all of these little strands? They're strikingly similar to a group of organisms called filamentous cyanobacteria that populate today's oceans and lakes. They're a group of bacteria named for their blue-green color, and the filamentous species form long strings of cells. Cyanobacteria are super special because they were the OG photosynthesizers on Earth. You can thank them for creating our oxygen atmosphere 2.5 billion years ago. Barkhorn and Tyler named them Gunflintia after the formation they were found in. There are also a ton of tiny spheres that look like bacteria or spores. They were named Hieroniospora, but it was too difficult to tell just from looking at the fossils if they fit in with any modern group of bacteria. The second is that these microorganisms were found in structures called stromatolites. Stromatolites are rocks characterized by these super thin wavy layers. They're what happens when cyanobacteria are happily doing their thing for many thousands of years. Cyanobacteria can grow in thick mats, and as the water washes over them, the mat traps teeny tiny particles of sand that get bound into a thin layer of sediment. The layers build up and eventually get cemented together, resulting in these unique structures that we find throughout the fossil record. So the fact that these fossil filaments were found in the larger context of a stromatolite made Barkhorn and Tyler even more confident that they were in fact cyanobacteria. And the third is that there are certain chemical signatures in the rock indicating that life was present there. So when little bacteria are doing their thing and photosynthesizing, they're taking energy from the sunlight and carbon dioxide gas and turning it into sugars, that creates a certain chemical signature that can only be there if life was there doing photosynthesis. So we rely on that chemical signature to tell us that compounds in those rocks were generated by actual living things. The Earth is around 4.5 billion years old, and the first 4 billion years of that is known as the Precambrian Eon. These were the first Precambrian fossils ever to be discovered. Even though older fossils have since been found, for a brief moment these were the Earth's first fossils. And their discovery remains unique and monumental in scope and significance. Like, no other scientist is ever going to quadruple the fossil record in one fell swoop. 
Barkhorn and Tyler ushered in a golden age of Precambrian paleontology, and numerous discoveries of ancient fossils from all over the world followed their 1965 paper and continue to this day. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching Science in Real Life. This was part of the We Create EDU Spring Collaboration, so be sure to check out their playlist if you want to see more stories about firsts from some of YouTube's best educational creators. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Science in Real Life, and we'll see you next time.